Peter Keith Wheeler was born on Saturday the 8th of December 1934, son to John and Lillian Wheeler and younger brother to Geoffrey. His parents managed a series of station hotels for the London and North Eastern Railway, which meant that Peter and Geoffrey were brought up in hotel apartments and relocated a number of times during their childhood. After West Hartlepool, the family moved to Sheffield, then Newcastle, Glasgow, and finally Manchester. Peter always had a particular affection for the North East and regarded himself a Geordie. During the war, Peter's father ran the Royal Victoria Hotel in Sheffield. This was helpfully situated on a bridge straddling the River Don, positioned between the steelworks and the railway marshalling yards. Both were prime targets for the German bombers, so Peter and Geoffrey were evacuated to Grindleford in Derbyshire for their own safety. Peter told of how he and brother Geoffrey would hide in the hotel until it was too late to return to Grindleford so they could spend some more time with their father. Peter's childhood brought him into contact with a wide range of interesting people and may well have stimulated his enduring interest in accents and dialects. Along the way, Peter also took up boxing and gave a good account of himself in the ring, both at school and later in the army. On arrival at the Grand Hotel in Manchester, Peter attended William Hume Grammar School, where he made a number of lifelong friends, including Bob Dale, Tony Shields and Michael Blackburn. At William Hume, Peter was fortunate to meet an English master called Chris Lowe, who nurtured his interest in the written and spoken word and got him involved in amateur dramatics. Peter appeared in several productions and developed a keen interest in the works of Gilbert and Sullivan. William Hume would join forces with Wally Range for some of these productions, and it was through these that Peter first met his future wife, Pat. It was also in Manchester that Peter and Geoffrey were first introduced to broadcasting through a junior drama group under the tutelage of Trevor Hill. Other members of this group included Judith and Sandra Chalmers, Brian Truman and Billy Whitelaw. They performed in numerous radio plays and were regular contributors to Children's Hour, alongside the likes of Violet Carson and Doris Speed. Leaving school, Peter enlisted for national service, rising to the rank of captain in just 18 months. This was a very positive experience for him and he was justifiably proud of his achievement. Peter always held the military in high regard, not least because of a family history dating back to the charge of the Light Brigade, and he could easily have chosen the army as a career. Returning to civilian life, Peter acquired useful skills in paper, printing, sales management and logistics. He also worked at the National Computing Centre before moving back into broadcasting. In 1958, Peter married Pat. They honeymooned in Paris before setting up home in Sheffield and later South Manchester via Southport. They went on to have four children, Nick, Joanne, Alistair and Christopher. Peter joined Granada soon after it was formed, working primarily with the news team as a reader and a reporter. At this time, Granada covered the whole of the north of England, and one of the more notable stories that Peter reported on was the Moors murders. He also worked on the new Scene at 6.30 programme with Bill Grundy and Michael Parkinson. This offered an innovative combination of local news, events, 
and interest stories. It became a must for visiting celebrities, and Peter is credited with one of the first public interviews with a rising band from Liverpool, The Beatles. At that time, Granada was a vibrant company producing a range of high-quality programmes. Peter worked on many of these, including World in Action and All Our Yesterdays. Although he later embarked on a freelance career, Peter maintained his strong links with Granada through long-running shows like Crown Court and What the Papers Say, which he described as the fastest show on the fairground. This was because the show went out live every week, required the presenters to deliver multiple voices and was subject to script changes at short notice. This week, what the papers say is presented by George Gale. The case you're about to see is fictional, but the procedure is legally accurate. The characters are played by actors, but the jury is selected from members of the public. In parallel, Peter continued his radio work with the BBC. Programmes included Sports Spotlight on a Saturday afternoon, quite an achievement given his ambivalence towards sport, and Talk About on a Sunday morning, together with a multitude of plays, short stories and documentaries. He also presented a live three-hour breakfast show for six years. Outside of his working life, his major passion was boating, and whilst the P743 that was the can number of Crown Court, lived on the drive for much of the year, the good ship Orinoco and the yacht Skidan spent more time floating in the waters of North Wales. Only later in life did Peter embrace foreign travel, not least of all for Alistair's wedding in southern Spain. Most people's abiding memory of Peter will be his tremendous sense of humour and the fun that he brought to almost every occasion. He had a razor-sharp wit and a wealth of stories drawn from his own rich experiences which he would bring to life with a range of voices and dialects. His humour was sometimes irreverent, sometimes wicked, but always infectious. He could light up a conversation, a room, a studio, an audience. And listening to his stories, you got the impression that whenever something exciting, incredulous or downright bizarre was about to happen, he would have a personal invitation. And if he didn't get the invitation, well, he'd create the party himself. The Tulip Festival at Cannon Hill Park this Sunday from 2pm, Bank Holiday Monday and Tuesday from midday. See military and youth bands, parachutists, gyrocopters, pony rodeo and John Marshall, the blindfolded car driver. <laughs> I do apologise. <laughs> Sick. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <clears throat> You'll see it. <clears throat> right. See military and youth bands, parachutists, gyrocopters, pony rodeo, and John. <laughs> oh, John Marshall of Blood. <laughs> we, we might have to do this last, gentlemen. <clears throat> Becoming distinctly unwell about this, guy. <laughs> this blacked out guy at the wheel. Another attempt. <clears throat> Try and take it slowly, too, which makes it far worse.
the Tulip Festival at Cannon Hill Park this Sunday from 2pm, bank holiday Monday and Tuesday from midday. See military and youth bands, parachutists, gyrocopters, pony rodeo and John Marshall, a blindfolded car driver.